Welcome to this week's Rogers McHugh YouTube video. In this week's episode, we're going to discuss how to be persistent without being annoying. Let's go. Welcome to this week's Rogers McHugh YouTube video. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about being persistent, but not annoying potential clients. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave any comments that you might think might be useful and we'll come back to you on those. So what I wanted to discuss this week is being persistent when you're targeting potential clients without being annoying. This came up because quite often within my career, trainee consultants or, or consultants in general actually have said, I don't want to ring them again. I spoke to them last week. They, didn't, they weren't recruiting. They didn't have anything for me. Um, if I ring them again, I'm just going to annoy them. And I think that's probably the right method, the, the, the right thought process. What's the point in just ringing them for them to tell me they've not got anything again? But I think it's the wrong execution. You've constantly got to be in touch with potential clients that you're trying to target, that you want to secure work with. I mean, let's be honest. If you don't, how do they know that you're there? But you've got to be smart about what you're doing. Nobody wants you to be ringing up once a week saying, hi, I'm calling from XYZ recruitment. Do you need anything? The answer is always going to be no. You've got to make sure that you're building rapport with people, that when you ring them up, it's not just about work, that you can talk to them on a personal level, that they feel that you've got a personality. Um, one thing that people keep saying to myself is I need to try and inject more personality into these videos. Trust me, I'm trying. But when you're on the phone to people, make sure that you're building rapport with them. Get out and see them. Go meet with them. Talk to them about something other than work. What do they like? What, what do you have in common? What can you build rapport around? Then be more inclined to answer the phone to you the next time if there's an element of rapport there. Don't forget, people say it takes about seven touch points between um, starting to communicate with a potential contact and actually securing them as a client. Seven contact points. So the first thing I would say to that is you've got to be prepared to build rapport because you've got to get them to want to have those seven touch points. But more importantly, in my opinion, if those touch points are always the same, so you ring up every week. Hi, I'm calling from XYZ Recruitment. Do you need anything? No. Right, no worries. Next week. Hi, I'm calling from XYZ Recruitment. Do you need anything? No. It's the same call. It's the same point of contact or, or, or contact point, in my opinion. You need to develop that. You need to work on, on what was discussed last time and use that in your introduction so that you're not wasting time, so that it's not the same call every single time that you speak to them. Have knowledge, so make sure that you're making notes. What was discussed? What's the reason behind the call? Is it a project that they've just secured? Is it some funding that they've just got? Is it um, a, a, an internal promotion that they were discussing? What's the reason behind the call this time? What can you discuss with them um, that's not just about them hiring? What projects are going on in the outside world away from them? What are the general market conditions like? Having a, a pretty um, open conversation will lead you down many different avenues. What's your personal brand like? Do they know what you do? Are you, when you ring up, are you known to them before they even answer the call to you? I mean, that's a fantastic position to be in, but that's what everybody should be striving to do. Is your personal brand good enough that when you make an outbound call or an email drops in, into somebody's inbox or a WhatsApp message drops into the, into the phone, that they know who you are, what you do and where you're from? If not, you need to work on that personal brand because again, that's a reason why people may or may not pick up the phone to you. If they don't know who you are, if they don't know what you do, are they likely to give you that opportunity? If you're known in your market as an expert, in the right circles, speaking to the right people, you're more likely to get them to answer the phone, respond to your email, come back to you on the WhatsApp, all the various different ways that you might reach out to clients these days. Make sure that when you're speaking to them, you're able to add value. Are you able to advise them on the current state of the market? Which of their competitors are doing well? Which of the competitors are struggling? What part of the country, um, in, in whatever sector they do, is, is booming right now? Are you able to add value when you're speaking to them? Do you speak to them on a level playing field? Or do you see them very much as, as uh, the king? You know, we always say, or we always used to say, client is king. And, and obviously that's true, as are candidates. But you can't see them and put them on a pedestal. 
You've got to see them as an equal. Do you know as much about their market as them? If not, go and learn. Make sure that you, you're adding value every time that you're speaking to them. It, again, it might be something as simple as telling them who's busy in the market, what clients are busy, who's spending the money. But if you can do that, again, the more inclined to speak to you. Always have a solution. If you are going to them with a candidate, make sure that it's somebody that they're, they're going to want to speak to you about. If they tell you that, that they're looking for candidates or that they would always look for candidates from certain companies, make sure that when you go to them, the candidates have worked for those companies. They'll never get bored of talking to you about candidates that are right for them as a business, even if it's not right now. If they're not hiring, but you've got the right candidate, they might not want to interview them this time. They might still interview them just because they're the right candidate. It might go nowhere because they've not got a, a budget to hire at the minute. But if you're seen as always having the right type of candidate, who are they going to pick up the phone to when they actually are recruiting? Is it going to be a random agency or is it going to be yourself that's shown that you can add value, that's shown that you can solve problems, that you can go to them with the type of candidate that they always look for? So knowledge is power in this. You've got to make sure that you know your clients inside and out, that you build relationships with them, that you make sure that there's rapport there and they like you, that you're going to them with solutions and that you're able to add value. And the last one is follow up when you say you will. If you're telling somebody that you're going to give them a call a week on Tuesday, make sure it's diarised. Make sure that you give them a call a week on Tuesday. There's absolutely nothing worse than somebody saying they're going to reach out to you at a certain point and then they're not doing it. Following up is vitally important. Cold calling is horrendously bad um, if, if you just got a long list and you're going through it all the time, every day, every day. And you need to try and warm those call, cold calls up. You need to get to a stage in, in all reality um, where every day your diary is set out based on the calls that you've made previously. And when you're coming into the office, you've got a diary full of calls uh, of clients that have told you to ring back on that specific day about a specific thing. So make sure that you follow up. Really, really put a lot of emphasis into getting an opportunity to speak to somebody again and getting a follow up in the diary and make sure when it's in the diary, you action it. They don't answer the phone. That's quite possible. Listen, everybody's busy. I'm busy. You guys are busy. It is feasible. They won't answer the phone. Nothing wrong with dropping them a text. Hi, followed up as we discussed. Let me know when you're free to talk. Dead straightforward, dead simple, but you'll get a lot of return from that kind of attitude. And if you do all of that, there's a very good chance that you'll secure some of these target clients to, to become actual clients. And let's be clear, that's what everybody's aiming for. Um, it's tough, recruitment's tough, we know it's tough. So give yourself the best opportunity. Stop ringing people up asking if they're looking for staff and start to implement some of the things that we've spoken about in this video and you'll definitely be a million percent more successful. Do you think there's anything that I've missed? If there is, feel free to put it in the comments below, like this video and subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. See you next week.